Okay, so let me get started again. Um, so like I was saying, Sharks for Kids, uh, we do outreach to kids and uh, help to create shark advocates both in the classroom and on the web like we are doing today. And um, it's not only the shark advocates like myself, but it's also uh, people like Dr. Julius uh, who um, actually helps us uh, teach kids about sharks and gets them interested in sharks and shark science. Um, so after today's presentation, I'll actually be going to our website and I'll show you where you can get more information about some of our activities and things that you can do today while you're at home and get more involved and learn more about sharks. So let me kick things off and uh, introduce our uh, speaker today, um, uh, uh, Dr. Julius and uh, uh, Chutney, is that? Chutney, yeah, Chutney. very close. Chutney, uh, thank you. And uh, some of you may have uh, seen him last week drawing sharks. I actually uh, had the opportunity to draw a shark. Here's my shark, let me see. That's not nice. too bad. I maybe got a C, C plus. I'm gonna pay That's more great. attention today. Uh, but it's a lot of fun following him um, and uh, learning to draw sharks. So he makes it really easy for everyone. Um, but some of the things that you may know uh, Dr. Julius for is he created dinosaur stamps. So wherever you see those stamps around, he actually uh, has an education and PhD in, uh, in natural history and learned all about dinosaurs to begin with and then got into more types of wildlife like sharks. And uh, so you, you may have seen some of his work in books. He does a lot of illustrations. And if you've been on the Sharks for Kids activities page, you've definitely seen some of his work because we typically reach out to him when we need some uh, illustrations done on sharks. Because uh, uh, Jillian and I and Duncan, we're not very uh, good at drawing sharks as you saw from my picture. Um, but uh, I'll show you where you can find all that information and uh, more activities after we kick things off. So with that, let me turn things over to you and uh, teach us how to draw another shark species. And I, I already been getting questions coming in and, uh, you know, they want to know what shark are we going to draw? What uh -huh. shark? I didn't want to give it away. <laughs> I figured you could uh, share that with them. So I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ron. I appreciate that. And uh, thanks very much for having me again. It's always a lot of fun. Um, working with you guys and, and to be able to do these, these webinars uh, on, on how to draw sharks and to help people keep uh, occupied at home these days. Um, there's lots of fun things to do with sharks. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to draw a shark today again. So um, what are we going to be going with? So a lot of you guys are wondering uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, just to give you a, a, just a quick, quick little uh, um, share of, of uh, what it is that I do, just to give you an example of some of this, as Ron was, was explaining, I do illustrations um, for, for uh, museums, for uh, books. Uh, I do a lot of books uh, for kids. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a lot of what I do. This is um, a picture of some dinosaurs um, that I did for the cover of a, of a book with uh, Steve White that shows my work. Um, and uh, but a lot of what I do is also sort of marine stuff. And so this is an ichthyosaur from long ago. And nowadays I do a ton of work also uh, illustrating uh, sharks. Uh, this is uh, prehistoric sharks here that uh, lived right around the time that most of the dinosaurs went extinct. Uh, and uh, you can see the change up in the upper left there as the meteors are uh, the, sort of the first little meteors are entering the atmosphere from the asteroid that's coming. It's going to hit the Earth. Um, uh, so this is uh, an example of one that I did with some scientists to help them to publicize the paper, uh, their scientific research paper on some sharks that they uh, had been studying uh, from uh, the time of the dinosaurs. And then I also, as I mentioned, have do a lot of uh, work with um, uh, illustrating books for kids uh, on sharks, on whales. There's one coming up this year on arthropods, all kinds of things. I love drawing sharks and painting sharks. And these are some of the photos of some of those pictures from that book, actually. Um, so that's some of what I do. And uh, today, uh, we're going to, let me just get to, okay. So you're wondering what kind of shark we're going to be doing today, I guess. And uh, we're going to be uh, drawing a uh, hammerhead shark, actually. 
So there it is. And, well, there, there it isn't yet. But that's coming. So this particular hammerhead shark is one of is probably my favorite hammerhead shark. And here we go. I'm going to load this up here. So you, you want to get your your pencils and your papers out now. And uh, the best way to do this will be if you if you have two colors, like if you have a pencil and a coloring pencil or a pencil and a pen, uh, uh, the, the best is to go with, I'm going to tell you first, I'll be doing this sort of a rough sketch with shapes. Uh, I think that's useful because uh, a lot of us artists try to break down what we see into shapes, the simpler shapes uh, when we when we illustrate it. And then we put the sort of the final touches on that. Uh, and then if you do that in say one color or do it lighter or with a pencil and then do the final with a pen, uh, whatever you prefer, whatever is easier for you. The main thing is with this first part here, you wanna do this with a little bit lighter touch. And then when we add the final details, that's where you can kind of put the heavier uh, strokes of pencil or pen onto it. And then that way you'll, you'll get to see the final shark more clearly and then the, the shapes that we set up to help us to to create it will kind of disappear uh, or will be less visible uh, so uh, with that I'm gonna start and I'm going to do this in a particular way I work a lot of my work is digitally so I have a, a tablet and, and a stylus which works like a pencil and this works like paper or canvas and uh, but I also do a lot of work with traditional painting and drawing on canvas or paper. Uh, I, I'm going to do this directly on the computer and you can follow along that way. It's a lot easier to see it in this case, I think. So I'm going to start with the rough shapes first in blue. And uh, this will help you to distinguish it from the final uh, outline that I'm going to add in black. And so that'll make it a little bit easier to see what's going on, I think. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'll start it up here. So Take your page. I, I've set up this screen as an eight and a half by 11 inch uh, page. Uh, so it's like your typical kind of uh, letter uh, page. And so it makes it easier to kind of put things on the screen or to see where it's happening. First thing we're going to do is you want to take your pencil and we're going to make uh, kind of a, a long banana with sort of a narrower end at one end. Okay, so kind of like this. Start and uh, whoops, actually, let me fix this because, yeah, kind of a long banana. Yeah, uh, yeah there's even, even a couple of those little dark ends on the banana like bananas you can have, right? <laughs> there we go. So uh, that doesn't look much like a shark yet, right? And that's fine. So this is going to be the body of the shark. Now, this shark, uh, by the way, is, um, as I mentioned, it's a winghead shark. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a winghead shark before. I hadn't for a long time. And when I saw one, it is spectacular. Hammered heads are wonderful anyway because they've got these amazing heads, right? That, that strange hammerhead is called a cephalofoil. But this shark is, from, you can probably tell from the name, the winghead shark, it's special hammerhead. It's got an amazing kind of and that'll become obvious as we add details to it. Um, okay, so next, we're going to uh, go to the front end of the shark, which is kind of like the slightly thicker end of that banana that you drew. We're going to make a circle around that sort of the dark end of the banana. Go like that. Okay. There we go. So now we've got a banana with a circle at the end. Not much yet. The next thing we're going to do is, uh, because you know we like fruit so much, we're going to add another banana here. It's a smaller one. Again, we're just kind of making this in small shapes. This is a, a narrower kind of banana, and at the opposite end of it, like that. Okay. Still doesn't look too much like a shark. But uh, some of you might already kind of see where this is going. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see soon. This shark, though, the winghead shark, lives in uh, the Indian Ocean and uh, around Australia and uh, Southeast Asia in a lot of the sort of shallow, close to coastal types of waters. And uh, it eats fish and invertebrates. And it, uh, 
lives very it lives right around the area also of the Great Barrier Reef, um, and so the waters in in these regions that are fed by um, you know fish that grow up around coral reefs, for example, are really important to some of these animals like this shark, and so it's very important for us to preserve these habitats, and um, so we're going to now add the next shapes. Okay. So here at the the bottom of this second banana, we have this, we're going to make a little triangle. That, so you can see there. Okay, now you can start to see something happening there. And then I'm going to add, if you take the, the upper part of that, the, the big main first uh, banana that we had, and we're going to kind of connect the top, a little top of it like that. See, so we've got a little bit of a, um, a connecting line along the top edge. You'll see why that's going to be important eventually. And so this shark lives in, in, in these areas that are near the, the Great Barrier Reef. And, you know, you guys might have seen the news recently that there was a lot of um, bleached coral in, in this area. And this has been happening for some time now. Corals are losing... Uh, the sort of the greenish color that that it makes them so characteristic looking, and that's that because it it means that they lose their ability to produce food, um, and so this is partly due to the oceans warming up. So this is one of the things we want to do is do as much as we can to prevent the oceans from warming. Warming, and so we have to reduce the amount of um, greenhouse gases we're putting into the air. So this is going to all help in the long run. But it's super important for us all to try to do what we can to reduce how much we're emitting. Now, we have uh, another triangle I'm going to put here along the bottom of the banana. Okay, see? So now it's starting to become obvious, I think, which is the front end of the shark, right? You can usually tell because the fins point uh, kind of backward. They're usually kind of swept backward. And so you can start to see what's happening here. The way I choose to draw this shark uh, will help us to see the really neat aspect of it. Okay. Next is going to be another uh, triangle on top here. It'll go from that top of the banana down here. Like that. And so this shark is going to be a little different from last week's. Last week's was a, was a tiger shark. It was seen from the side. We're going to show this one a little bit more from the top and side because we want to show off that really, really neat head of the winged shark. Okay, and then next, uh, I'm going to add another little connecting line here. You see up at the top here, along the back of the shark, between the back and the that sort of the top triangle. I'm going to add a little connecting line here. Okay. And then, since we like triangles so much here, I'm going to add another little triangle right down at the bottom here, just past sort of the middle part of that long body of the shark. Sharks have an, a, ver a variable number of fins. Uh, not all sharks have the same number of fins. All sharks that are alive have these pectoral fins. Those are the ones kind of like our arms. Those are the ones that you see on the drawing that are on the big one on the bottom. And then that little connecting line on top, that's the pectoral fin on the other side. This line that is the top edge of the banana is the very sort of the central back of the shark. Uh, and we're sort of seeing it from above and from the side. Board. That's why we needed that extra line on the very top connecting the two, sort of the upper curve of the, that banana shape because that's the other side of the shark that we're seeing a little bit from above. All sharks that are alive today also have these pelvic fins. That's a little triangle in the middle of the banana shape. Uh, those ones are like our legs. Um, for early uh, vertebrates, early animals, that um, early fish that evolved into amphibians, those are the fins that evolved into their hind legs. And then all sharks that are alive today have dorsal fins. Some sharks only have one dorsal fin. Those are like the six gill sharks, frill shark, seven gill sharks. And also there's one really interesting one fin uh, cat shark, which is really neat. 
But most other sharks that are alive today have two dorsal fins. Now we're going to add um, second dorsal fin. So back here near the near the tail, there's this kind of this little triangle. There we go. And now here's where a lot of sharks differ. Some sharks today don't have this next fin called the anal fin. It's a little fin that's down near the tail. But a lot of sharks do. The ones that don't include like dogfish uh, or the saw sharks, uh, the angel sharks, uh, and uh, a really weird group of sharks that used to be uh, grouped with the uh, dogfish um, called the, um, uh, uh, the prickly sharks. And those ones are also a really interesting group. But this guy, and most sharks, uh, or a lot of sharks alive today, do have these anal fins. And here, you want to pay attention, it's going to be at the bottom, and it just starts slightly forward of that second dorsal fin. Another triangle there. Right, so now we have all of the fins of the shark in place. What we want to do is just add one more little detail. The top of the tail fin, uh, also known as the caudal fin, has this little notch like that. It's a subterminal tip. So sharks, a lot of sharks have this there. Their tail uh, ends in the tip. But there's also this little notch or little flap that hangs off the bottom of the top end. So now, this doesn't look much like a, a hammerhead shark yet, right? I kind of put that circle in, the, in place in the front there where its head should be. Uh, but that's, that's not much of a wing, is it? So what we're going to do is, uh, sorry, I'm just fixing that. I'm going to start to put the, the actual cephalofoil halves, or the wing halves. So the first one is going to be the one on our side of the shark. Because again, remember, we're looking at it a little bit from above, but also from the side, sort of halfway between. So take at the end of the circle, go down like this. And then see that the very tip of that banana shape where there's the dark uh, spot that bananas have? Take a line down from there. Also parallel or, or pretty much the same um, way as the other line went. And then at the end of those lines, you see it went just a little beyond the end of the pectoral fin or the, the big fins on the bottom in the front. And it should go a little beyond because this shark has spectacularly large uh, uh, cephalofoil uh, lobes, these, these head lobes. And we'll connect those two lines at the bottom like this. So that's one half of the head. This thing is amazing. I love this shark uh, for the shape of its head. The other half of the head, uh, because again, we're looking at it a little bit from above, is going to be visible as well. And now again, go to the front of the circle of the head. And this time, because the head is sort of swept backward, or sort of tilted backward, those lobes, it goes a little bit backward and upward like this. And again, Go from sort of the back end of that dark part of the sort of the tip of the banana shape and then go up same way as that first line. And then again, and now it ends, both of them end a little bit short or a little bit before the top of that first dorsal fin. Connect these two lines. Okay, so now you can see sort of the outline of this shark. One last little bit here um, at the very end of the shark at the tail. Notice at the very bottom, we, the, the tail kind of has this weird little knot. It doesn't connect, so we'll just draw a little line here connecting the bottom of the tail to the body. Like that. Now, we have all of these shapes put in place. Now we can start to actually add the sort of the final lines. So up to this point, you wanted to draw this sort of lightly, not too much weight, or if you have two colors, you would do this in a different color to make it easier to tell what we're going to do next. And that's why I choose blue um, to show you in this case. So what I'm going to do now is start to add, um, I'm going to put in another layer because this, that's what this um, software allows me to do and it's going to be very useful. I'm going to put the heavier lines, or in my case, the black line on top of it so that we get the final details of the shark. And this is where you want to put heavier lines because now we have basic shapes and we can more confidently uh, connect them as we need to to add all of the final details of the shark. So we're going to start at the front end of the shark, at the head, uh, because that's really the, the highlight, the, the main highlight of the shark is, is that spectacular wide head. 
we're going to do a lot of following of the of the shapes that uh, we set up already here, but there's going to be a little bit of, um, of moving away from some of the shapes. So pay attention to how um, I put these in place. At the front end of the shark, that round bit, um, that circle we set up was, was important because as you see here now, I'm putting a line in and a trace over it. That front end will remain sort of a, a little bit of a half circle. Sorry, it's a little bit of a... I'm going to just erase a little part of that. Um, just want to make it a little bit less curved. There we go. Just like the circle. Trace right over there. Okay. Just a little bit that much. Now the head, the front end of this head is, is an interesting complex shape, but it's, it's, it's really easy. All it means is that we're going to have another bump, a little bit of a bump like this. And then there's an, one more bump along the end, but it's a very small bump. It kind of comes out a little bit and then finally joins up at the end. There. And we'll do that to the other side of the head as well. So again, a little, little bump in the front here. And then a little bit of a longer low bump to the end there. Now, the, the ends of this cephalofoil or this, this hammer head um, kind of bulge out a little bit forward again. So I'm going to go to the bottom to the, the, the part of the head nearest us and it'll kind of bulge out a little bit and then come back here to the back corner. The reason that's important is because that little notch at the end, um, underneath the, the head, which we can't see here, but underneath it, the, near that end is where kind of the nostrils start. Uh, and, and, and a lot of hammerhead sharks, you'll see that kind of indentation. You see that the, the nostrils are very much close to the end of those. That's really interesting because hammerhead sharks now have their nostrils separated way out from each other. And one of the ideas as to why it might be beneficial or helpful for them to have this wide head is because it allows their nostrils, with which they basically smell the water, to be separated out far. And it's kind of like when we walk around and we have our eyes separate and we can, our brains um, put together the, the, the image of the world from both our eyes and allow us to see how far away things are. It's called binocular vision. Uh, it's important for our eyes to be separate to be able to judge distance. Sharks uh, hammerhead sharks are probably able to judge the direction from which smells are coming because of the difference in time that it takes a smell to reach one nostril versus the other. And their brain can probably put that together and say, aha, I, I smelled it first on this side. That means that if I turn this way, that'll be in the direction of the smell. So it's important for them to find food. So that might be one of the important reasons hammerheads have this neat shape. And this really wide head makes a, a winghead shark probably really good at sniffing. Uh, directionally. The other thing is that the eyes are on the end of the cephalolobe, cephalofoil uh, ends. So again, we're going to put in the, one of the eyes, the near eye, and that's right here at the tip, the front end of this tip. It's a little dot here, like that. Now we're going to add the, that little notch at the end of the head on the opposite side of the, the other wing. So this and it curves back to the back corner like that. Uh, we can't really see the eye so much on that side the same way because it's on the side of that hammer, right? But we can see it, it bulges out a little bit, so you can, you can add a tiny bit of a bulge to where the eye would be like that. Make it accurate, because they do kind of bulge a little bit out. Now we're gonna connect the back end of this uh, hammer head to the body of the shark. Now pay attention to where the, the hammer head uh, shape lines joined that circle. And we're gonna end up, uh, we're gonna make a little dot about here. That's gonna be our target where we're gonna end up. We're gonna start at the end of the hammer nearest to us. And it kind of goes a slight bit away from the shape, kind of comes around like this, and then it, it turns back in, and then it, at the end, it hooks like that. The hammer head, the back end of it, it uh, comes in and then it joins the body sort of in a, a little bit of a gradual curve like that. So now we have one end of the hammer head. And that remember, we're looking at the shark from 
side end above a little bit. So for the other end, for the other hammer, we're going to come in and we're not going to see that little hook at the end. Slight curve like this, but we're going to stop here, just like that. So there's no hook. banana shape and then that joining line um, that's that's where it was okay now I'm gonna start to draw in the uh, body of the shark we're gonna start from the front here and just below that hook it kind of curves out a bit like this and then it stops at the uh, pectoral fins reason that's important that it curves out like that is because that's where the gills, the gill slits of the shark are. That's uh, where the water exits, uh, and that's how the shark breathes. It takes in water through the mouth, and then it passes over these blood-rich gills and passes out through the gill slits. This shark has five gills, five gill slits on each side. We only see the ones on our side, so we're going to put those in now. Start about halfway between that hook where the head joins the body and uh, the start of the pectoral fin. We're going to draw this one slit, and it's a little bit curved forward like that. Small slits, one. And then we're going to draw the last one just right over where the pectoral fin begins. And it's a little bit shorter than the first one, and it's like this. And then there are five of them, so we're going to put one right between those two. About halfway as long as well. And again, there's five, so put one halfway in, be, in between both of those lines. One here and one here. There, now we have five gill slits in the right place. Uh, now we're going to draw the pectoral fin on our side. That starts from the base of, of the body where we ended it. And it'll curve out a little bit from that line, just a little bit, the front edge. And then on the way back in, it curves in slightly, and it kind of is slightly curved like that. But at the very end on top, it, it does this kind of a little hook like that, you see? And that's important because there's that sort of a bit of a flap to the back edge, the trailing edge of the... Um, pectoral fin. Actually, most of the fins of sharks are, they have this kind of a, kind of a, a loose uh, tailing, uh, trailing um, kind of a flap at the base. Okay, so that's our pectoral fin on our side. Now we'll continue the body, and that basically we just trace along that line that we set up first, right up to the pelvic fin. Okay, stop at the pelvic fin. The pelvic fin, kind of like the pectoral fin, is again curved a little bit out from there. From the line that we drew but not much and then on the on the the back end of it the back edge of it it, it again curves inward a little bit like this and again there's that hook at the end like that short little hook a trailing sort of flap there more of the body along the bottom to the anal fin stop at the anal fin now the anal fin is neat because these guys and, and hammerheads have these wonderful little fins these anal fins before the tail they're usually pretty sharply. And you can usually tell what species it is too, partly from the shape of this fin. Winghead sharks are nice because they've got this wonderfully hooked fin. So you'll see how this, this goes. It, it, it goes away. Oops, that was a little bit of a big, big, big blob. It goes away a little bit from that um, line that we drew, but not much. And then at the end here, it hooks inward like that and goes out backward. And then there's that slight bit of hook again at the end. So it's actually maybe not quite that sharp as I big blob. Not quite as sharp as I drew that tip. Here, go. I'll just, I'll just make this, you can do this too. It's a little bit, oh, <laughs> sorry, my computer is doing funny things. It keeps putting a blob there where I don't want it. A little bit of a, it's a little bit blunter, but like that. Now we'll finish the body line up to the tail, base of the tail like that. And there's the bottom end of the shark. Uh, I'm going to start with the top end of the shark now, way back to the front end, to the head. The 
the top of the shark, the back, the center line of the back is represented by the top edge of that banana shape that we drew initially. But we can see around the curve of the shark a little bit. So we're seeing a little bit of the other side of the shark and that is what is represented by that top straight line. We're gonna more follow that top straight line actually for this part. We're gonna start here near the front end of the banana about here and draw a line. Sorry, that's a little bit of, uh, that was a little bit too high, I'm sorry. Start about here, draw a line pretty much joining us to the dorsal fin. And that dorsal fin there, you can see is kind of going down a bit lower than that, the line that we drew. And that's because the dorsal fin is along the center line of the shark on top. But since the shark is rotated toward us so that we can see a bit of its back, we can see that center line slightly down from the top edge. So I'll draw in the dorsal fin. We pretty much follow it except give it again a little bit more of a sweep or curve to the back. So like this, we start from the base, from the middle line of the shark, the center line. Give it a little bit of a curve as we go up. Ends up here and then on the way down, it's again curved a little bit more than we drew initially. And remember there's that little bit of a trailing hook right there, like that. That's the dorsal fin. Hammerhead sharks are wonderful because they have these wonderfully long fins, tall, tall dorsal fins and usually quite long fins in general, but the dorsal fins especially are really tall. Um, and it's a, this is a small shark. If you spread your arms out, it's about that long and no bigger, and a lot of them are small. Uh, not like great hammerhead sharks, which are much bigger. This is a little one. So you see that other little joining line we have there at the front of the door, first dorsal fin? Well, that's the pectoral fin, kind of like our arms, on the opposite side of the shark, but we can only see part of it because it's around the bend of the body of the shark and partly hidden by the dorsal fin. So we're just gonna follow that just like we did from the edge of the shark, not the center line, and connect it to where it hits the dorsal fin. And that's it, you can't see more of it because it's behind the shark. Now we're gonna continue the body on the top from the back of the dorsal fin where that top straight line started. And we'll continue basically following it all the way to the beginning of the second dorsal fin, the back. The dorsal fins, sorry, I keep using the term, it didn't explain, but those are the ones that are on the back of the shark. Dorsal uh, means sort of top, as in, as in when you lay an animal out, uh, the back of the animal is, is facing upward. Um, and uh, that, when you lay a shark on its belly, its, its back is facing upward, and that is anything that's on top of it is often referred to as, as dorsal. The dorsal fins are the fins on the back of the shark. And now we're gonna do the second dorsal fin. That's a little one. And it's not as hooked as the anal fin below it. It's more like that pelvic fin in shape. A wee bit of a curve on the front, not much. And then again, a wee bit of a curve on the back, but not much. And there's that hook in the back like that. And not, not as, as interesting as the anal fin, but you know, still it's, it's, it's very visible. Some sharks have very tiny second dorsal fins. Um, and some have really big ones. This one has an in-between. Now the last bit of the body connects the end of that second dorsal fin with the tail or caudal fin. And that is pretty much as we drew it there, that line there. The caudal fin is wonderful, the tail fin of hammerhead sharks in general, but especially of the winghead shark. It has an enormously long upper lobe and a very short lower lobe. This condition in sharks is called heterocircle. It's a, a tail that has very different lengths on the top and bottom uh, lobes. A lot of fish like tuna have two very similar length lobes, but sharks in general, many of them have longer upper lobes. And these guys have wonderfully long upper lobes. So we're gonna follow along that banana shape that we drew, that little one, up to the tip like that, same curvature. And then at the tip, this is kind of a little bit sharper. And then we continue and continue out to this little flap that we drew and back in toward the banana. But a little bit further in, there's gonna be a little bit of a notch here, you see, like that. Now we continue along the bottom of this initial banana shape we drew, and then where it starts to get to that little triangle at the bottom, we're gonna just slightly curve toward it, like that. And then continue out and give this a little bit more of a 
curve outward like that and follow it back in toward the bottom of the body like this. There. So you can see now the shape of the tail fin or the caudal fin. Um, it's very close to that. Um, you could actually add a little bit more of a line up on top here so it's a little bit closer to that second dorsal fin. You want to make it more accurate. But this is what we do as, as, as illustrators or artists. We draw kind of an initial line and then we refine it some more. We usually don't, we don't always get it right the first time, so it's fine to adjust things as we go. The uh, last couple of things we want to add to this shark are the tail is, um, this is going to do this with a light line, not a heavy line, a light line, because the body of the shark um, follows its spine or, or ver vertebral column, as, as uh, scientists will call it. It's the backbone of the shark, but the backbone of the shark continues a bit into the tail. And you can see that there's a thickening of that part of the, the upper lobe of the tail a little bit as, as the body's sort of mass continues into it. And so with a light line, I'll do this a little bit of a dotted line, continue it up like this, and it gets narrower, this is the bottom edge, up to the top, and then it continues back down to join the top of the back of the shark like that. It's just a little bit thicker flesh there, and that's where the, the bones of the shark would basically end part of the way through there. And uh, then the last thing that we want to do is, um, well, we could do two last things. If you wanted to, you see the upper center line of the shark? Just add it with a dotted line maybe, just a little light line so that we, we can see that, because that helps us to show that the shark is seen not just from the side, a big blotch of my computer did. I didn't want that. But a little bit from above too. So that dotted line kind of indicates that we're seeing the back of the shark. And a lot of sharks do have a little bit of a ridge on top on the center line. So you can actually tell where the center line is because there's a bit of this little long ridge. And you can this can help you to identify some shark species based on whether they have that ridge between some of the fins or not. The last thing is that sharks have this fascinating system um, that, with which they can sense vibrations in the water. Uh, it's kind of like hearing, but it's, it, it's more like they can sense vibrations that are, are, that, are, that are so faint that you wouldn't actually necessarily hear them underwater with your ears, but they can feel them with this um, organ called a lateral line. Lateral means side, and you know, so it's a side line. It's a line on the side of the shark, and we're going to put it on the side here. Start near the, the gills, near the top, and then just kind of go slightly downward toward the middle of the shark. Slight line again, about here. So it's, it's a series of, of little water-filled or, or, or fluid-filled space that, that basically is sensitive to vibrations in the water. And you can see that on sharks. So there we are. That is our winghead shark. Now, if I were to... Um, you can, if you did it with a different color, you could sort of um, remove some of that, that rough uh, shapes that you used or not. But if I remove them from mine, ta-da, there's the shark. And now you've drawn a winghead shark. And we're seeing it again a little bit from above and a little bit from the side. So you can see the wonderful shape of that, that gigantically long cephalofoil or hammerhead. This is the, the one of the nine or so or ten species of hammerhead sharks and the one with the longest uh, hammerhead. So this is how you would, one way you can go about drawing a, a winghead shark. Um, uh, so I'm going to uh, stop sharing this part of the screen and go back to the regular screen. Um, and uh, Ron, um, I'd like to just do one last little thing. This is going to be a short one. Um, it's not going to be an actual thing that I'm going to take us through, but um, I've made it available as well um, uh, for you guys to put online. Um, last week we talked about in the questions uh, section on, uh, somebody asked about a uh, helicoprion, which is a fossil relative of sharks. Uh, it's also more closely related probably to um, what are called rabbit fish or chimeras. Um, and they are actually a type of, of uh, cartilaginous or, or, or cartilage uh, skeleton animals like sharks and rays. And it lived long ago uh, during the Permian period, for example. And 
the neat thing about it, I was explaining that it had this really neat kind of a lower jaw that had like a buzzsaw uh, set of teeth. Oh, wow. And oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so what I've done is um, make it so that we can, you can build your own helicoprion with working jaws that show how it works. Now, I'm going to show you the, the finished model. Uh, this is what it looks like, and you can build one like this, and I'll show you how to do it. I've actually set up a sheet with instructions so that you can cut it out of regular paper and stick it together and make your own helicoprion. Um, and the neat thing about this guy is, I'll hold it up to you close here, is that the way that I've set it up is you, you end up putting a toothpick through the lower part of the, the jaw and through the lower jaw here, and then you can see that it can rotate wow, in and out that's really cool. so that it works. This is that that buzzsaw like jaw. And so the neat thing is that the, the way they first found this shark's remain or well shark relatives remains is was this curled um, sort of a, a, a spiral shape uh, arrangement of teeth. Nobody knew how it worked on the shark or on the animal. And then eventually they made some spectacular discoveries about th that showed part of the, the whole head of the shark, the, 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 the skull and how it fit together. And it shows that this was part of the lower jaw and that the new teeth would grow in the back of the jaw and the whole set would rotate forward as the shark grew. That coil would, it basically coils in smaller and smaller and toward the, the center of this jaw. And the, as the shark grows or as the animal grows, more teeth are added to the back and this whole thing rotates forward and it just gets bigger and bigger. But the neat thing is that it, it can, open its mouth and close it like this. And it ate probably soft bodied relatives of squid. And so it would grab them as they, as they would uh, swim. And this, these teeth are pointed backward a bit. So it would grab them and suddenly they would be stuck. And as it closes jaws further, it would slice. So it grabs, pulls backward and slices at the same time, basically slicing its food in half and pulling it back into its mouth so it can't escape. And so it was a single row of teeth, not two. Uh, so what you can do is you can build your own. And I'm going to show you here. Um, I'm going to do a screen share of this will be available. Um, I don't know if uh, Jillian has already uploaded it or not, but this is the, um, the plan. Oh, great. I, I was going to ask you if it's going to be up yes. on our site. So Actually. I made a template so that you guys can print this out on. Now, this I've set up on legal size paper. Uh, but you can print it on any size paper that you have. It just would be a little bit smaller. The reason I set it up for legal size paper is because if you do it on legal size paper, which is uh, eight and a half uh, by 14 inches, is that it's big enough then that you can stick, um, if you cut a, like the core cylinder of a roll of toilet paper, which may or may not be hard to find these days, uh, you, if you cut it in half so it's half as long as it was, you can stick it in to the body and it holds its shape round like this. But it doesn't have to be like this. You can just cut out the, the animal um, from the piece of paper and, and just fold it, you know, fold it in half and then cut it out. And it's fine, it works okay, uh, even if it's flat. Um, I lost my jaw in there. Um, but uh, if you want to, you can make it round and sort of three dimensional like that if you stick that half roll of toilet paper into the body uh, and I've got all of that on the instructions on the same sheet there. So uh, you just need to fold it in half, cut out the pieces, and then follow all the instructions, and then use a toothpick. And if, you know, if, you, if you're very young, be careful with uh, scissors or have a grown-up do the cutting for you. Also, maybe with poking the holes with the toothpick. And then you just leave a toothpick in between the jaws, and then that allows you to kind of move the jaws in and out, and then it works. And you can turn the tail back and forth as well like this. Uh, so that, uh, that that's, that's going to be a great activity. I, I oh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Myself. All right, we do have a few questions too. Yeah, there we go. Um, that we stop the sharing of that. All right. Hey, great. Um, so uh, this was the winged hammerhead, and uh, a lot of people weren't real familiar with that, and they were wanting to know about other types of hammerheads that you draw, and do you have a favorite hammerhead? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, hammerhead sharks are wonderful. There are about ten, nine or ten species now known, and uh, depends on. Uh, there's one of them that I'm not sure if they've, they've they figured out if it's a separate species or not. Uh, 
but there are at least nine species. And it's just amazing. Some of them have very short hammers, uh, hardly a hammer at all. One of them is called the bonnet head shark. Uh, and it's got a head that the, the, the hammer is basically just kind of two rounded uh, half circles coming off the head almost. And so they're barely a hammer at all. There are other ones uh, that are called, uh, there's a scoop head shark, which kind of looks like a, sh like a shovel. Um, there are uh, other types like the great hammer head shark, which is the biggest one. It can grow up to about, what, about 12 feet long or, or maybe even 15. It's huge. It's beautiful. Uh, I know that Jillian and, and, uh, dives with them a lot, and I've seen beautiful photos that she takes of these. They're spectacular shark. They're one of my favorites. I think the winghead shark and the great hammerhead shark are my two favorite uh, hammerheads. Oh, that's the awesome. winghead shark is my favorite because it's it's just so odd, so bizarre with that amazingly long head. But yeah, it's beautiful are, lines. So people yeah. uh, people wanted to see my shark, so I'll, I'll yeah, let's see it slowly. Hopefully that excellent. That's uh, there you go. It's coming in and out. There we go. Right on. Oh, you know, uh, appreciate Good job. Teaching. I'm not as uh, accomplished, and I think I, a lot of the comments and questions I got is, oh, my shark doesn't look perfect, or my lines are too dark. Um, okay. I imagine you've been doing this for a while. Your first time out, you didn't get a perfect <laughs> shark. So any advice no. you can give to the others out there wanting to become better drawers of sharks? For sure. For sure. First thing, don't be hard on yourself. When you do your first ones, it's not going to look like you wanted it to. And that is completely normal. Uh, nobody comes uh, with built-in sort of factory-built uh, drawing skills. Uh, some people are, are maybe initially uh, have a head start uh, on, in terms of being able to, to sort of think in three dimensions, but nobody has the built-in ability to draw. So it takes practice. I've done this for many years. Uh, I'm uh, four to six years old now, and I've been doing this since I was three years old. Uh, my mom has my first drawing, and uh, it's allegedly a rooster, but you can barely recognize it. And, and uh, you know, we, we, we like to pretend it's a rooster. Uh, and this is what happens. You draw something for the first time. I draw something for the first time, even after having been drawing for many years, and it doesn't work out. I have to do it a lot of times now even. It takes me a while to get the hang of new things that I haven't drawn before. Keep at it. Do it lots. Have fun with it. Don't, um, don't uh, become discouraged. Don't be hard on yourself. Tell yourself, you know what? I'm trying. I'll, I'll take, need some time with this and have fun. That's, that's how you get good at it. You do yep, a lot of work have, with it. have fun, enjoying it, and practice uh, makes perfect or near perfect. So just yep, keep Exactly. Going. And that uh, activity I showed last week uh, about using a, a shadow, projecting a shadow onto a wall with a, with a point source uh, flashlight helps as well because you can trace outlines of, uh, it's kind of, like, kind of like shadow puppets, but you take, let's say, a model of something or a toy, you can trace that out, and it helps you to sort of see how shapes can be projected onto, onto flat two dimensions. Oh, that was a great I idea. I hadn't thought about that when you showed it. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And so I think we've got a lot of people with some really cool sharks. And what I'd recommend is if you have access to social media, take a picture of your shark, post it, you know, tag it with, with sharks for kids, uh, tag it with Dr. Julius. And we'd love to see all of your sharks out there. Um, Cause hey. no two sharks are alike, even of the same species. So, don't think you got it right. Maybe you just got a slightly different version of the winged hammerhead. Um, also had a question about um, you have a, a scientific background, um, and how does that help you with being an artist? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so my scientific background, I did this before I became an illustrator or an artist. I mean, I've always been doing artwork as a hobby before. I just always loved it. Um, but my actual professional career, I, I did first a scientific background, and I started in uh, what's called ecology. That's the study of how animals and plants and other living things interact with each other and with their environment. Uh, and that is where I started. And then I also have a, a background in microbiology in science. And so I did a lot of microbial ecology, <laughs> which is the study of how bacteria interact with their environment and each other. And I studied really weird places like the deep ocean. And we can see sharks in the deep ocean too. But the way that this helps me 
is uh, because I learned how it is that we work in science, thinking critically, asking questions. Um, if you don't know something, you try to figure out how to get at it, how you design an experiment to figure it out. And so when I do a lot of my work, I work with scientists uh, mostly, or a lot of them uh, work on, on fossils or fossil sharks sometimes, fossil dinosaurs and other animals and plants that lived long ago. And they, they use their scientific background to try to figure out what these looked like uh, when they were alive. And uh, I work with them and I use the information that's available that they found in their scientific studies to try to figure out and try to piece together what these animals looked like when they were alive. And so it's important for me to rely on, on scientific information that's available about these animals from the bones or sometimes soft tissue impressions are preserved. Yeah. And we put all of this together, kind of like a big jigsaw puzzle of information to try to figure out what it looked like when it was alive. So asking questions of the natural world, trying to figure out in the, the, the most realistic, simplest um, way possible how these things all work helps me as an illustrator or artist figure out what some of these animals looked like when they were alive. And also today to make sure that I'm drawing things accurately so that I put the right sharks in the right environments with the right kinds of, uh, of other fish or plants or algae. Uh, and so that the, the drawings that I do are, are more correct or accurate. Oh no, that's, that's great when you can marry those, the, your knowledge and your, your artistic talents and then just the details and things like the nostrils and the way the fins. Right, right, happen. yeah, that's it. It's really And good. it helps working with scientists too because then we speak the same language. So that helps me in my job of a scientific illustrator because we get, you know, we don't, they don't have to translate a lot of what they do because I understand a lot of the basics in science. And you're able to use both, both sides of your brain, which is. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was sort of like that. Exactly. Or, awesome. or yeah, all those same things. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, let me wrap up today just by thanking you. Um, this has always been, uh, I know from the first one, a very popular session and we've gotten several. Hey, are you going to be given another session? Because we may be at home for a while longer. So hopefully. We'll Happy to. Again. Always. And uh, just keep an eye on our website uh, for that. So just wanted to thank you once again. And let me share my screen and I'll actually show you because a lot of the questions we got had to do with um, how do I find out about the webinars? How do I uh, get information about um, the, the, the print that he uh, just showed you? So this is our website. It's at sharksforkids.com. And you can find out a little bit about us um, in the education session. This is where you go to look at all of the webinars. So you can see all the different webinars that we have. The ones that we've already done are actually, some of them have recordings and you can click on the recording link and it'll take you to our YouTube channel. So we have a Sharks for Kids YouTube channel to where we post these after. So this one will be uploaded shortly. And then when you look at under four teachers and four students, you'll see a lot of information about things like crafts. And if we look at that page, you can see different activities like Tilly the Tiger Shark actually have one of those here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a fun one uh, for the young kids. There's all kinds of coloring uh, things on here. There's also the how to draw the shark, the tiger shark that we did um, earlier last week. And look what's up here already. Jillian has already uploaded the helicoprion. So that is, that. is, I'm going to try that. That's a cool one. So <laughs> that was one of the questions, where do we get to this information? So while you do have some time on your hands, if you need uh, some, some uh, things to do, the students can look here and the, the teachers and uh, the parents that are homeschooling can also look in, for different activities and curriculum and uh, different fact sheets that the, everyone can use. So thanks again for joining us 